In this video, I'm gonna show you the five bait setups I use every time I go fishing. Boom, let's go. Hey, it's Roman Castor here. Welcome back to the channel. It's great to have you here. If it's your first time here and you enjoy spotted bay bass fishing or you're trying to figure it out, consider subscribing. Hit that bell notification so you don't miss anything. All right, so if you're just starting out spotted bay bass fishing or you've, or you've been spotted bay bass fishing and you wanna just figure out some new lures to try, you're at the right place. In this video, I'm gonna give you five lures that I use every time I go out to help you catch some spotted bay bass. So here we go. All right, so here's how we're gonna do it. I'm gonna cover my favorite five fishing lures that I use for spotted bay bass. I'm gonna show you what they are, how I rig them, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about how I fish them. So let's get started with lure number one. These baits are in order of how I use them when I, when I initially get on the water. So when I'm on my kayak, I will usually put out something like a, a rig or a crankbait to troll on the death on the way to where I'm gonna where I intend to go fish in case I find any fish along the way I call this kind of like a search bait so I use this uh, recon baits a rig this is a smaller option they have a they have a HD version which is bigger this is a smaller one it's just called the recon a rig and on it when you buy it all you get is the wires with the little blades attached to them you don't get these long bigger blades these blades are size number five uh, willow blades and uh, this is a five arm a-rig and what I do is in the middle arm the center arm I'll use a quarter ounce either cool baits or war baits underspin and with the soft plastic a little paddle tail and this one happens to be a z-man scented paddle paddler z and I'll give you guys a close-up of these in a sec and then these are just regular jig heads these happen to be some VMC jig heads they are x strong needlepoint, three-eighths of an ounce jig heads. So it's three-eighths, one quarter. And what this does is it makes it so it swims this way, right? The blades will be up, the weight will be on the bottom, and this guy will be in the, in the center, right? So this is a nice and fun uh, setup to troll and to basically just figure out where these fish are because uh, it, it lets you cover a lot of water in a short amount of time. So. The way, the way I fish this, I usually fish it close to the bottom. Uh, and it's, I know it's hard to tell at first when you're on the bottom, but get on your kayak, get enough momentum going. And once you have enough momentum, you kind of cast behind you. And once it hits the water, you let it free spool for a couple sec couple seconds. Keep your thumb on the spool, of course. So, and you're letting it out slowly. And basically you're letting it out. And as you're letting it out, the pressure of the water is going to push it to, towards the surface. But the more line you let out, it's gonna get heavier and heavier and it'll start going towards the bottom. Uh, once you start feeling a little bit of snags, and the whole time you're doing this, you have to keep your keep your kayak going, basically trolling it. Um, the whole time you're doing this, eventually you're gonna to start to feel little nicks and bumps on the A-rig. That's because you're close to the bottom or you're hitting, hitting the weeds on the bottom behind you. So what you wanna do at that point is you lock your reel and you give it like one or two cranks so it's off the bottom. But now you'll, you'll be at the, right, the right zone, you'll be maybe like a foot or two off of the bottom or a foot or two off of the, the weeds that you were snacking. And that's like the perfect height or the perfect range for this thing to be in. Cause at that range, halibut can come hit it and, and spotted bay bass can come hit it. So this is a, a really nice rig for that, okay? So lure number one is the A-rig and moving on to lure number two. This video is also gonna be part of a write-up that I do on spottedbaybassfishing.com where I'm gonna break down all these pieces and have all the links for you to go get all the Stuff that I mentioned in this video okay so let's move on all right so for lure number two it's also kind of a little bit of a search bait it covers water fast and that is uh, the crankbaits so I use two kinds of crankbaits the first kind is a medium diver and that comes in a lot of different colors and and varieties and people have, there's custom painters everywhere all over the place I painted a couple of myself this is a little great white shark <laughs> crankbait it's a medium medium diving crankbait uh, chartreuse is a good color for these fish so I went ahead and painted a chartreuse crankbait. I call my crankbaits cannibal crankbaits because uh, they have a little angry face on them, okay? Uh, and then I also painted a little calico bass colored crankbait. I do a spotted bay bass one in medium and, and deep, but I don't have a medium one on me right now. The medium diving crankbait dives to about seven to eight feet, I'm gonna say, because they're rated for, I don't know, like 12 feet, 8 feet, between 12 and 8 feet, 12 and 12 and 8 feet in freshwater, but saltwater is more buoyant, 
So I usually get about I don't know seven to eight feet out of this guy. Right? This is a medium this is a medium diving crankbait. There's a lip. And that's good around Mission Bay because Mission Bay is not that deep. And uh, you basically, you're basically right in the strike zone. Most of Mission Bay is around, I would say, 12 to 15 feet deep. Um, so this is a perfect depth uh, if, it's, if it's low tide. If it's low tide, then you'll be really close to the bottom with this, with this shallow one. And if it's like, high tide, I like to fish this deeper one. This one dives down to like, I'm going to guess 14 to 15 feet. It's rated for 17 feet, but I'm going to say maybe it gets down to 14, 15 feet. Oh, but another thing to note is that all these, oh, this one has a rattle, and this one has like a, a single knock. Okay? Um, I don't use ones that are silent. I always use the ones with a knock because it's uh, loud, of course, and I like to fish these at night sometimes, and I like the extra knock to give the, to give the fish an extra, extra information to figure out where the lure is when it's going through the water. This is a deep diving crankbait and a medium diving crankbait. Okay, this is a lip difference. Okay, so again, I troll these in the kayak or I'll get parallel to shore like where the rocks are and figure out what the target depth is and then fish in parallel to shore. So it'll, they'll be coming along the rocks, knocking on rocks on the way. Okay, yeah, it's super difficult not to get these snagged up, but on the kayak, you have a better probability of getting it back. Um, but don't be afraid to fish it in like weird spots because you'll lose it. It's part of fishing. Every time you buy a lure, consider it lost. So when you lose it, you won't feel so bad. <laughs> but yeah, medium diving crankbait and sorry, deep diving crankbait and medium diving crankbait uh, for spotted bay bass in the rocks or around the trolling it or, or fishing it parallel to shore along rocks. So for example, say this is a, this is a, this is, these are, this is the shore. And these are the rocks that take you to the to the to the sand, and this is the water, right? So here's the rocks. Okay. So what you want to do is you want to figure out at what depth here your crankbait is good for. So if your crankbait is good for seven feet, you're gonna get around to seven feet. That means you have to get your kayak lined up this way and cast that way and fish it towards you parallel to shore so that your so that your crankbait is always in the right depth, right? If you have a deeper diving crankbait, then when you get parallel to shore you get further in away from shore so that your crankbait is coming along the bottom at the right depth, okay? So that's just a little extra pointer. Uh, that's if you're fishing it close to shore, otherwise I just troll it. Uh, trolling it is pretty, is pretty effective, especially when you're, just gonna, when, you're, when, you're not when you're not really fishing and you're just moving from spot to spot, it's good to troll something, either the A-Rig, the deep diving crankbait when it's high tide, and the medium diving crankbait when it's low tide, okay? So that's those are my tips for for the second bait. Now let's move on to the third bait. The third bait is one of my favorites. Of course, the Z-Man Ned Rig style bait. This bait is the one I used to catch uh, 100 bay bass in one day. Uh, that was a 16 hour ordeal. It was awesome. I could have probably caught all those fish on a single setup, like meaning one head and one uh, um, lure. I did it with three setups and that was because one of them I I caught a fish and it went and took it into the docks and I just snagged the dock and I couldn't get it back. My line snapped, okay? The second one I lost was because I hooked into a bat ray or yeah, a bat ray and that thing was, no, probably a stingray. A stingray and that thing was huge and I just like, there's no way I was going to get it. I was fishing 10 pound line, so it snapped me off. If it wasn't for those two things, I would have kept fishing that same lure and I'm going to show you guys a little trick on how to make these little uh, Z-Man TRDs last longer, okay? So here we go. So there's two flavors of the Z-Man Shroom head, okay? It's a Ned Rig shroom head. Let's see what they, exa that's exactly what they call it. They call it a finesse shrooms with a Z. And it's called a Ned Rig jig head, okay? Let me take one out of the package real quick so I can show you what it looks like before there's something on there. Here it is. This is a, this is the regular one, a finesse shrooms. And then they have another flavor of it, which they call a power finesse shroom head, okay? This is the one you want if you're gonna be fishing spot, spotted bay bass. Okay, I started with the finesse one, so I have a bunch of them. I'm not gonna get rid of them because they work, right? But then here is the power finesse one. See that? The power finesse one is is a is a thicker gauge wire, and it's a and it goes has a longer shank too, so it's gonna get you a better hookup ratio. Okay, so when you're getting these, these are all one fifth of an ounce. Okay, they're both one fifth of an ounce. I think that's the biggest one they make right now, but it's super effective. So you want the the one-fifth of an ounce 
Power Finesse Shroom Head. And that's from Z-Man Baits. I usually fish them with a TRD. They call it, it's called a TRD, it stands for the real deal. But it's basically a little slug, right? It's about two and a quarter inches long. Another soft plastic I use is the Z-Man Hula Stick, okay? These come a little bit longer out of the package, uh, but I usually cut a half an inch off here. So here's when I use a Ned Rig. I'll usually use it after I've been hit on the A-Rig or the crankbait multiple times. I'll go back to that same area and kind of explore it more with the Ned Rig. I'll, I'll find the spot where I usually where I'm getting the, the strikes on the other stuff and then I'll kind of like basically fan cast around that whole area and get, get all the rest of the fish uh, with the smaller uh, finesse lure. These are super durable. This, like, they're made out of that Z-Man elastic stuff so it's super stretchy and it lasts a really long time but even then these hooks are so thin that as a fish yanks on the plastic if you if it didn't catch the hook and then just grab the plastic and you feel that little tight and you go to set the hook what we'll end up doing is we'll end up stretching it right there and the hook will cut into the plastic right there all right see watch and see how the plastic has a little bit of a of a cut now that's because when the fish grabs it and you set the hook, you're pulling it, you're pulling the hook through the plastic and that ends up cutting a little bit of the plastic, making a little bit of a line. I think you can see it right there. See that? So what that'll do is it'll, it makes it hard for you to, if you start to miss fish, it's because that tear has gotten so long that your bait is just super stretchy. And what you do is you basically, you unhook your bait. I, I, I like to do opposites. I'll put it back through to the opposite side of the bait so for example may it come out of the bottom instead of the top and now when the fish stretches the bait there's more tension on the actual hook to get sucked up because there's no give anymore because there's no tear there yet right but as soon as it tears you'll have to do the same process again you'll have to pull it through and in this case since we were since we already went out of the bottom we're gonna go out of the side now so we're gonna basically take the hook out thread it through again so we make it come out of the side now and that'll give you a fresh new untorn spot so the bait gets pulled along. See how, see that stretch right there? So it's it's a little thing, um, but it does come in handy once you figure out what's going on. When I was trying to do the 100 fish video, I missed fish number 17 like three or four times because of that. There was a huge tear down the, down the bait. I thought I would be okay because it stretches and it was staying on the bait, so I thought I'd be okay. But what ends up happening is the fish pull, again, the fish pulls on the tail, the bait has way more give, it stretches a lot more. See how right now it's stuck against stuck against the hook? When it's stuck against the hook when it's stuck against the hook like that, it'll get torn eventually. As that gets torn right here, it gives the the bait more stretch. So the fish are able to stretch it out more and nibble on it before they get to the hook. So uh yeah, that's why it's a good idea to make sure you don't have a tear in there. And if you do, take the bait off and just rotate it a little bit and find a new spot that doesn't have a tear yet to be able to use that same bait for a long time. Once, you do, once you're done with that end, you can take the whole bait off completely and actually use the other side. Okay, and then you have a whole... That's why I think I'm pretty sure I could have caught 100 fish on the single weight, on the single setup if I hadn't lost it. Because there's so many options. I was, I was rotating it eight times on each side. So that's like 16 positions and I was averaging about 10 to 15 fish per, uh, per position. So that could have easily done a hundred fish. That is bait number three, the the Ned Rig from Z-Man. Links to all these baits exactly will be in the description below. And if you just want to check out everything I fished with, you can go to romancaster.com forward slash tackle box. That's my Amazon influencer page where I put everything I use to make this vlog and to, and to catch fish, okay? Okay, so let's move on to bait number four. Bait number four is something you guys are probably already used to. It's been super popular uh, this past couple years. And that is the underspins. So this is a cool baits underspin. This is a, a 3 eighths of an ounce. And this is a war baits underspin. This is, I think it's a, uh, I think this might be 3 eighths of an ounce also. Yeah, it's 3 eighths of an ounce. Uh, I usually fish these in 3 eighths of an ounce or half ounce, okay? I don't like to fish the lighter stuff uh, when it comes to this type of bait because I like to fish these close to the bottom 
and it takes, I'm not that patient, so it takes the bait too long to get to the bottom <laughs> if it's a quarter ounce uh, on the on the heavy line that I, on the heavy line that I like, that I like to fish, okay? So, and, uh, and just a side note, I'm gonna go over the setups I use to throw this stuff on in the next video on this channel, okay? So that'll be the next video. Just make sure you subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss the review of the actual gear I use to throw all these different baits we're talking about in this video, okay? Here we go. So these are fun to fish with. They're super, super easy to set up. There's two differences between the cool baits and the war baits underspin. Uh, the war baits has a little wire coming out of the head to like a double swivel. And the, the cool baits has a swivel built into the head to another double swivel. So that's kind of a three swivel system. This is kind of a two swivel system. The other thing is uh, with all of the war baits heads, they have the little loop that you tie the the line onto on the nose of the little bait and the cool baits have it on the top that's going to give the bait a little bit of different action um when this guy swims it's probably it'll, it usually will get some stuff snagged on the nose but it gives the bait a different swimming style on the war baits one um it's on the nose so it's less likely to get snagged but it swims a little bit different okay i haven't done an actual comparison on these two i fished them both a lot uh, right now I'm tending to lean towards the cool baits one because it's the one I've been more uh, bit on. I think I was just not that good at fishing before. <laughs> so I need to do an actual comparison where I where I fish these two baits on the same with the same trailers and with the same tackle and maybe see if it see what the difference is in hookup ratio. That'd be kind of a cool thing to check out. Also the other thing to look at is the the blades on the war baits one is a little bit smaller than the no blades on the cool baits. Both of these are good options. I fish them both and I like fishing underspin. So what we do is you basically tie this on and uh, you fish it. You can pop it right off the bottom, let it sink, reel it up, let it sink, or you can kind of slow, slowly wind it towards you. Um, if you downloaded my, my PDF on 25 fishing tips for beginners, I go over the two retrieval systems that I use, the two retrieval techniques that I use to fish uh, these kind of uh, baits. And you can get that by going to romancaster.com forward slash 25 tips. Uh, you'll sign up for the email list and I'll send you a PDF with the 25 tips. I've also made a, a video version of it that is uh, available on my channel somewhere. I'll put a link for it up here somewhere. So, okay, so let's move on to bait number Five. Okay, so bait number five is the Zoom, or in this case, Bass Assassin Fluke. So the only difference between the Bass Assassin Fluke and the Zoom Fluke is that the Zoom Fluke has a fork tail, it's basically split here, and the Bass Assassin has a round tail, okay? But it's a hollow body, the middle of it is, is hollow, okay? And the way I like to fish this guy I usually rig it two different ways, but this way we're going to talk about is the bullet, BB, and uh, extra wide gap worm hook. Okay, this happens to be a gamakatsu uh, hook, but you can use owner hooks as well. So this is a size three hook. Here's a little package, and this is what it looks like. Okay, it's a weird looking hook. If you're not experienced with fishing, this is a weird looking hook, right? You're like, what is that for? Okay, so I'm going to show you what it's for. Here's a zoom fluke. The fluke has a, a solid piece in the front. All this piece is solid, okay? It's thick and solid. And then when it gets to the, to the hair, the belly of it is hollow, okay? It goes in about that much, much as my finger does, okay? So it's from there to there. What we're gonna do is, from the nose, you're gonna put the hook in straight down, but only as far as this part is, is, is long. Okay, so this little shank here, it's about a quarter of an inch. So you're gonna put the hook in about a quarter of an inch, okay, from the beginning. So you hold it like this from like pinch its head and you go straight down right down the middle, only a quarter of an inch, right there. And once it's there, you make a sharp turn straight down. So the bait, this is the top of the bait, this is the belly of the bait, this is the head, this is the tail. So you go straight down to the belly, I'm sorry, it's straight down this way, so to, to, to my left. So you turn it, and you may come straight out, right down the middle. There's a little seam line you can see, to, you can use it as a guide, so boom. OK, 
okay? So now your hook is like that. It's in the bait, straight down, and out, straight down the bottom. See? It's, uh, okay? So now that it's out, you put, you put the whole hook all the way through. And then once it's through the top, you would rotate it. And then you push it through. So now the loop of your hook is barely sticking out of the nose of your bait, okay? So at that point, automatically, kind of, kind of almost on its own, the bait lines up with the hook where it's gonna, where it's gonna be, right? See that? So the hook is gonna come out of the back of the bait. So, but in order to do that, you gotta line it up, figure out where it's gonna come out. So it's gonna come out about right here, okay? And then what I like to do is I like to put my thumb where it's gonna come out. Like actually a little bit short of where it's gonna come out, so I know what to use as a guide. I'm gonna stand up so you guys can see it against my my shirt. Okay, here we go. Okay, so that's where that's where the bait's gonna line up with the hook. And the trick is, see the shaft here? The bend of the hook is going up and down the bait, not sideways. So when you put the bait through, you want to make sure you put it in straight up and down. So here it is. We're gonna turn this over. I'm gonna open it up. Then I'm gonna put the hook in straight down, not forward, straight down. So you put the bait straight up, push it through, and there it is. It should look like this, right? Then you push this back, then, you, then you'll be, then that bait will be flush against the top of the bait, okay? And that makes it so the weeds don't get stuck. And then another thing you can do is hold the hook from the, from the bend, hold the bait from the sides and push it up a little bit push it forward a little bit and then bring it up so that it gets hooked in so that the tip of the hook goes back into the the body of the bait okay that's it and now when you go into the brush the uh nothing will get stuck on it because it's the the tip of the the tip of the hook is inside the body of the bait okay but when a fish bites it it'll bite it here and it'll pop up it'll pop out the hook That's how you fish. That's how you set up the, the Texas rig zoom fluke, okay? Okay, so this is how you set it up when you're actually gonna fish it. You take your line, you put the bullet weight on there first. So here's the line coming in. You put the bullet weight on there, and then you put this little bead on there. So the line goes through the bead, and then you have your line sticking out, and you take that line and you tie it onto this hook. So it'll look like that and that allows the bullet weight to slide up and down the line and it gives your bait a little bit different action. I, I like to fish the zoom fluke because it has a little bit of a pouch down here and down here I'll, I'll usually fill it up with like uh, with scent or any kind of like uni butter or, uh, or some kind of uh, fish attractant and then I'll, I'll fish that around uh, rocks and just let it basically let it go down and sink to the bottom and I'm just gonna bring it move, it, move it, move it around real slowly, wind it up pretty slowly. Or once I feel it hit the ground, I'll pop it, let it swim down, pop it, let it swim down. So this is fun to fish um, from shore because it's less snaggy and you can cast it pretty far. And it's a fun, it's a fun setup. This is a fun setup. You can also do this with uh, with a, with different different uh, plastics. It's a cool setup to have. Uh, also, this this hook and plastic combination, you can use it in a drop shot scenario where you tie the, tie the drop shot to here and leave a long tag and then tie a weight to that. You can use this as part of your drop shot. Um, it's a cool hook to have in your box because, again, you can use it for this setup or a drop shot and uh, it's pretty versatile, okay? Okay, so those are the five baits I usually use when I go fishing for Spotted Bay Bass here in San Diego Bay and Mission Bay. If you wanna check out all the tackle or buy some of that tackle, you can go to my Amazon Influencer page. The link to my Amazon Influencer page is romancaster.com forward slash tackle box. All one word, all lowercase. And that'll take you to my Amazon Influencer page where you can help me out by helping yourself get these lures. Okay, uh, next week I'll be putting out a video of the rods and reels I use to throw all of these different baits. So if you wanna catch that, make sure you subscribe to the channel. If you found this video useful, give it a thumbs up and share it with somebody you think might enjoy it that's trying to get into, into spotted bay bass fishing and has no clue where to start. Send them the link to this video and you'll be helping them out. So another thing is I will be putting up write-ups for these setups on spottedbaybassfishing.com. It's a site I put up 
where I'm strictly talking about spotted bay bass fishing and it's basically going to be just uh, the written version of my videos where I'm doing walkthroughs on the different setups and this video will be part of that series where you can kind of learn all of, learn everything I've learned about spotted bay bass fishing uh, so you can kind of ramp up your your learning curve and not take as long as I did to figure this whole thing out so if you want to see the rods reels and line I used to throw the baits that we just covered I have made a video about it it's called spotted bay bass setup and that'll be linked for you up here also, if you enjoy other spotted bay bass fishing content, you might enjoy this video here. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the water. Woo!